Hi, this is the Games Planner, and I'm Jeff, the Games Planner, and today I'm Games Planning Race for the Galaxy. In Race for the Galaxy, we are racing to build our own little area of the uh, solar system. We do so by placing cards down on the table in front of us that shows what worlds or developments we have available to us. Now, the main element we need to be aware of in this game is that every card has multiple functions. It can be cards in your hand, like this. It can be goods produced by a world, placed like that. Or it could be used as money to purchase something, when we just throw those cards out. I've just used two cards to purchase something. As soon as you get your head around that idea that cards are more than just cards, it makes things a lot more understandable. So, <clears throat> let's have a look at the anatomy of the cards before we actually get into the game explanation too far. You'll notice this top corner has a circle. This one has a diamond. That is showing the difference between a world and a development. The number inside that circle or diamond tells you how many cards from your hand you need to spend in order to be able to build that on the table in front of you. They call it the tableau, but we'll just say table because that's easier. Um, <clears throat> also, within the circle, some of them will have a color. That tells you what type of good they produce. Some of them will have a color on the outside. That's called what's called a windfall world. It's harder to get those goods onto those worlds, but that's the difference between them. And the other bit is the number inside this little hex here is the number of points this world is worth if you've got it built on the table at the end of the game. The game ends once we get one player gets the 12 cards on the table in front of them um, or we run out of chips over here. Those chips are just points. The next thing that's happening on the card is there's a list one, two, three four and five down the side. That tells you the benefits that you get in each of the five phases by having this card on the table. So this one gives us benefits in phase three and phase four. Uh, don't stress too much about that iconography at the moment. <clears throat> okay, how do the phases work? First up, everyone takes this pile of cards here. Everyone has the identical pile of cards. <clears throat> in a two player game, there's two more cards included as well. You're going to select one of these cards. Let's say it's that one. Put a face down in front of you. Every other player does the same. And once everyone has a card down in front of them like that, we all flip them over at the same time. And whatever phases are showing on these cards around the table, they're the phases that everyone gets to play. There's also the benefit of there's a bonus written on each card that the person who actually played it in front of them, the person who caused that phase to happen, gets that bonus when the phase comes through. So let's go through each of the five phases. Phase one, that's the explore phase. Everyone gets to draw two cards. So see that little eye thing means look at. Look at two cards. See if I can get that in focus so you can see the numbers there. Look at two cards and keep one. So you take two from here, have a look at them, go, oh, I want to keep this one. And so you'd throw the other one onto the discard pile. <coughs> if you are the person who played the card, you'll notice that there are actually two versions of, of this card. One of them <coughs> allows the player, the person who gets the bonus, to look at five extra cards on top of the two. So you take seven cards and, and keep one. So you're only going to keep one of them if you use this one, but you get to look at a whole bunch of cards or you get to look at an extra one on top of everyone else. So look at three and you get to keep two. Um, phase two is the development phase. So development phase is the diamonds. This is where you get to take a diamond from your hand and build it in front of you. That particular one would cost me one extra card from my hand back into the discard pile to be able to build that. Um, the benefit or the bonus of playing the development phase or causing the development phase to happen is it costs you one less. So because this is a one cost planet, I wouldn't have to spend that card to be able to build this one if I cause that phase to happen. Phase three 
is the settle phase. You'll notice the circle in the top corner here. This is where I get to settle planets. It's done the same way as settling as our as the developments that we just did in phase two. But the bonus on this one, if you're the one who caused the settlement to happen, is once you have settled a world, which is put a world down on your table, table in front of you, and that one cost me one resource to build. It cost the number one in that top corner. I now get to draw another card into my hand. Now, the, uh, that was... <coughs> See how there's a black ring around this particular world? Some of the worlds have a red ring around them. Red ring means that they are military worlds. The, the only way you can build military worlds is <coughs> phase three, notice red ring with a plus one. I have one military at the moment on my table. I can't build this one until I can get those numbers up to equaling or over three. I'm going to skip over four and jump straight to phase five, which is the produce phase. You'll, phase. You'll understand why in a second. <clears throat> On the produce phase, it allows you to, anyone who has a number five with a little colored card next to it, it allows those planets to produce a good. What does producing good look like? Sorry, I take from the deck one card and produce a blue good. This card is now a blue good because it's sitting on the blue planet. That's the only card on the table that I'm able to produce with. So that's the only planet that gets any production happening on it. If you are the person who played the produce card, what that also allows you to do is produce on any wind four world. So if you happen to have a wind four world sitting on your on your table, you would also for free get to throw a production producer card on that. That is now a brown good. Now let's step back to phase four, which is the consume phase. Consume, you need to have goods on a world in order to be able to consume it, which is why I've done number five built for number four. <clears throat> so the bonus of playing number of phase four is that you get double the points when you consume. So how do we consume? If you notice, I have a card just here that says that I can consume one of these four colored goods. And when I do, I get a point for it and I get to take a card into my hand. Now that can be for any good I have around the, around my table. This one here, I just get to take one card into my hand by consuming a good. So I will only use this consume power to consume. That's how we consume. I will get one point, except if I made that phase happen, which means I get double points. So I would take two points and I get to draw a card into my hand. It's as simple as that. Now the other version of the consume phase has a little special bit, which is called the trade Trade happens first before we hit that consume phase. And what that allows you to do, the person who caused this to happen, it allows you to take a good from a world. So the world I just took that good from was blue. And that would allow me to trade that blue good for two cards into my hand. But because I want the point, I went with that one and used that. That's the phases. That's how it runs. Notice that you consume before you produce. So it is not possible for you to both um, produce a good onto a planet and consume it within the same turn. You will need to do that um, in opposite order. In the consume phase, so um, I've done that. Now I've also got one here. I can consume a good of any color for one card. If I was the person who played this, I have the trade. So I could have traded my brown for three cards rather than using it over here for the one. So I might do that and take one, two, three cards as the bonus because I was the person who caused that phase to happen. They come into my hand. I'm going to leave it there. Um, I'll get into the iconography in section two of this video. So please keep watching. Um, otherwise, all the information that you'll need is on this handy little chart here, 
and on the back of it, all of the rules are summarized here. It's just a little bit wordy to get through. Until next time, this is the Gamesplainer. Enjoy gaming.